In Taboo, Tom Hardy, in what is a personal passion project for him and his father, where he put up millions of his own money into, he plays James Keziah Delaney, a man who disappeared in Africa and returns to his home in London during the UK-US War of uh, 1812 after his father's death. He inherits Nukta Sound, an area of the ocean which could be key for a victory for either side during the war and could be a lucrative shipping channel. As such, it draws the attention of the UK government and also the powerful and infamous East India Trading Company. There are many dark rumours about this gothic and enigmatic Delaney fellow, rumours about his heinous practices, supernatural perhaps, which he took part in during his time in Africa. In fact, most assumed that he had perished in Africa and his sudden return put a spanner in the works of many of those around him, including his sister and her husband. Delaney keeps his own cards close to his chest, though it's clear he has some kind of plan to utilise his inheritance and perhaps wants answers and revenge for the suspicious circumstances surrounding his father's death. Delaney, we come to find, used to have a relationship with his sister that was more than just sibling love. Freaky, but as edgy as Taboo wants to be, shows like Game of Thrones already got their first on this one. Delaney's sister wants nothing to do with him, in spite of her concealed feelings of longing for her brother, but he repeatedly attempts to get her to ditch her annoying husband and hitch up with him. To be honest, even though it starts off as what you expect uh, the entire series might be centred around, given the name of the series, the whole brother-sister thing ends up being a subplot that, in the end, comes off as feeling a bit pointless and unnecessary. It's by far the least interesting aspect of the show. It's a lot more interesting watching Delaney march around, form alliances, build a small team and constantly outmaneuver and outwit those looking to crush him. You wonder what his goals are, what his end game is, what exactly did he get up to in Africa, and is he really some kind of supernatural demon? Sometimes the show does tend to get stuck up its own arse a bit too far. There's an aura about it that says, wow, look how hard and gritty and edgy we are. And there's a lot of shots of Tom Hardy walking about, looking cool and badass and broody, surrounded by filthy commoners sniffing their own shit and squelching around the muddy streets of London. But to be honest, in a way, that's the best thing about the show, the presentation. And when I say presentation, I mean the entire package, the CGI backgrounds, the high budget looking production design and sets, the costumes, the amazing imagery, the dirty feel, the sleazy vulgarity, it really does feel like you've been transported back to the 1800s. Never does it feel like these guys are actors playing dress up, and it really does immerse you and grip you, simply because of how they've managed to stunningly recreate olden day London. I really don't think I'd get bored of this show if it was, say, half an hour of Tom Hardy walking around the set. That's how great it looks and sounds and feels. Not to mention, even having a period drama set during this time with these terrific and elegant production values aimed at mature audiences with, you know, prostitution, graphic murder, poverty, profanity, racist characters, and just an all-round feeling of dirtiness and grit that you feel is a far more accurate representation of the time period is really great to watch. The East India Company is something they don't teach you about in schools in the UK. The most the average person knows is probably what they've seen from the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. But the cooperation is part of a dark era of British history that is often glossed over. And it's fascinating to see a TV series that not only takes part during that time period, but fully embraces the dark characters that existed. And the acting is pretty superb. In addition to Hardy, you've got some heavy hitters in the likes of Stephen Graham and in particular Jonathan Price as the primary antagonist who lights up the screen whenever he pops up. Essentially what Taboo is, when you strip everything away, is an observation of Delaney's cunning strategic planning and his ability to thwart those who oppose him. Many times it seems the East India Company has him cornered and Jonathan Price as Sir Stuart Strange lets out a cackle, only for Delaney to magic a way out. Occasionally it can feel repetitive, and there is an element where you feel that, no matter what the odds are, Tom Hardy is going to have an ace up his sleeve and come out on top. 
This can affect the tension of the show and there are numerous parts that test your suspension of disbelief. That being said, it is a really entertaining show. If you sit back and allow it to take you away, you get lost in the incredible design of the show and the meticulous details. Delaney as a character is captivating and intruding. He's a broken man, unhinged and mysterious, but depraved and quite reprehensible. You're never quite sure exactly what his moral compass looks like, if he has one at all. And it makes you on the edge when watching the show, you just don't feel comfortable with Delaney. You never quite know how he'll react or what he'll do. But when he is pitted against the vultures of the East India, headed by Stuart Strange, you come to find yourself rooting for him and his crew once this season is done. The series starts off great, has a bit of a wobbly middle period where there is extended focus on Delaney's infatuation with his sister and there's a lot of shady planning and scheming, but then it picks up again and finishes off very strongly. If they ever get around to making the second season, I look forward to seeing where they take it because there's a lot of potential for this series. I don't really see it as a money maker though, it looks like it might end up as one of those passion projects that never ends up reaching its full potential because of a lack of viewership. That would be a shame, because it's a great series that deserves to be built upon and continued. At its core, the series is pretty simple, but it's drenched in talent, and though it doesn't rank up with the very best of what modern day TV has to offer, it has a solid bite to it. 